Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to New Win International. Uh, for those of you who were watching earlier, welcome back. Um, tonight is uh, what I would like to call a special night <laughs> because uh, the Lord has the Lord has given me a word for the men. And uh, we were supposed to actually have this. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on just one second. We got something going on. All right. Got some, <laughs> got some technical things going on here. Uh Got some technical things going on, so we need to uh, just take care of that real quickly. Let's see. Hold on one second. Yep, yep, yep. This is the joys of doing double duty. <laughs> All right. All right. I think we're ready to roll here. Okay. Now, as I was saying that tonight that the Lord has given me specific instructions to minister to the men uh, specifically those who have uh, who are not working, <clears throat> who are not working. Uh, they are um, looking for a job and and uh, have uh, been been on that journey <laughs> for uh, for quite some time. And so uh, we want to just uh, we want to just speak life to the man tonight. And so, uh, as I was saying on yesterday, we were actually supposed to be having uh, this broadcast uh, on last night, but uh, because of a uh, power outage that we had on this side <laughs> uh, here in St. Louis, uh, we were uh, unable, well, in, in a certain part here in our area, uh, we were unable to do the broadcast. And so, you know, nothing happens by accident. And, uh, and I, I believe that <clears throat> there was some spiritual warfare that was that was happening. Uh, but but, you know, but we just, you know, pressed on and just believe God uh, for uh, tonight. And so I want to get right into the word. I'm so excited. But let's just pray <clears throat> as many are still kind of like just coming in and filing in and and uh we're just going to just get into this and and i believe that there's going to be uh uh just a mighty mighty release from the lord glory to the lamb of god glory to the lamb of god i just believe that there's going to be just such a such a mighty release from the father tonight hallelujah just a mighty release from the Father. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we just praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we just worship you tonight. Father, we give you the praise. and We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, uh, that you have gathered us together, Lord, uh, for, uh, I believe, what is a solemn assembly. Yes, Lord, to speak to your, uh, to speak to your, your men tonight, your men, your men of valor, your sons, Lord. You have called us together, Lord God, to declare uh, the word of the Lord. You called, together, called us together, Lord God, to be, uh, to strengthen one another. And God, I just thank you. I just praise your name and just give you all the glory and all the honor, God. Uh, and, and Lord, I just bless you, Father, for <clears throat> just a major, major release happening tonight. Father, I, I just bless your name, Lord. I thank you, God, uh, for this stirring that has been uh, uh, in our spirits, Lord God, for this particular word, this word, God. And Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for uh just uh, the power of your spirit lord god changing lord god situations in a moment i thank you god for the power of your spirit god lifting every burden 
removing and, and destroying the yokes, God. I thank you tonight, God, that there is a clarion call uh, from the heavens. Yes, there is a clarion call from the heavens. Yes, Lord God, that you are calling forth now and you are releasing freedom tonight in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, Father, we just bless you tonight. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for a release, a release, Lord God, of your spirit, God, a release of your anointing, God. Father, your word declares there is the, yes, Lord God, that the, the, that the anointing, excuse me, that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. And so, Father, we thank you for the anointing tonight, God, for this assignment. We thank you for the glory of the Lord that is in this place, Lord. We thank you, God, for strengthening your sons tonight, God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that not one, not one, Lord God, shall have their heads hung down. <clears throat> yes, Lord God, after tonight. I thank you that not one, Lord God, shall walk, Lord God, with this oppression or a burden on their shoulders, Lord God. But, Father, you are breaking the shackles of their God so they can begin to move forth, yes, Lord, in what you have called them to do, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for raising up the men tonight to move forth in purpose. Yes, Lord God, move forth, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, with with an understanding, Lord God. Yes, I thank you for the anointing, Lord God, that rests upon the sons of Issachar, resting upon your sons tonight in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we need it. <laughs> we need it, Lord God. The sons of Issachar understood their times and knew what the people ought to do. And so, Father, I thank you for these men, Lord God, these heads of households, Lord, these leaders, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Knowing what to do, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Understanding the times, Lord. Understanding where they are. Yes, Lord. And knowing exactly what to do. And so, Father, we just bless you, Lord. We give you the praise, God. Father, I thank you for this word that shall go forth, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask you to speak with your speak, Lord God, from your heart. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just begin to minister to every man that is watching, <clears throat> everyone that will watch this by recording in the name of jesus and so father we thank you lord god for just a mighty release happening tonight in jesus mighty name father we just declare now that we will not be the same yes lord we declare we will not be the same yes lord because of your presence and so lord we glorify you and we magnify your name we just bless you we just honor you lord yes lord what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve yes lord yes lord have your way in this place tonight in jesus name amen and amen i just very quickly some housekeeping issues there right at the bottom of the screen uh right at the bottom of the screen there you will see a little chat box feel free to use that to uh, be able to express your uh, uh your worship on there or send a prayer request or praise report that's what that's for, right? Grab your Bibles and turn with me, turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 26. I'm going to read this out of actually the Message Bible. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. We're going to verse 26. We're going to start there and we're going to uh, read down to uh, to read down to verse 31. Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 31. Hallelujah. For those of you who are just joining, welcome to uh, New Wind International tonight. This is Apostle Brian Pruitt and we have a word for the men. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, verse 26, 1 through 31. Glory to God. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you. I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. God spoke. Now, reading out <clears throat> this is Message Version. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature so that so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air. 
the cattle, and yes, earth itself, every animal that moves on the face of earth. And God created human, God created human beings. He created them God-like, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them, prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the, in the sea and birds in the air. For every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I have given you every sort of seed bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit bearing tree. Uh, given them to you, given them to you for food. To all the animals and all the birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there, and, and there it was. Verse 31. God looked over everything he had made. Hmm. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good. So very good. It was evening. It was morning. Day six. Go to Genesis chapter two. Look at verse eight. Genesis chapter two. Verse eight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. Then God planted a garden in Eden. In the east, he put the man he had just made in it. And God made all kinds of trees grow from the ground. Trees beautiful to look at and good to eat. The tree of life, excuse me. Okay, let's go back and read to the going uh, the, too far. Verse eight again. Then God planted planted a garden in Eden. In the east, he put man. Excuse me. He put the man he had just made in it. Now look at verse number fifteen. God took the man and set him down in the garden of Eden to work the ground and keep it. In order. Now, I want you to go to Psalms very quickly. Go to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Whew. Psalms 37. All right. And uh, I want to look at verse 23. Psalms 37, verse 23. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to read this out of the New King James Version. It simply says this. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Tonight, I just want to use as a thought for us to focus on, you're still a good man. Mm -hmm. You're still a good man. Now, it's very important that any time that you talk about anything or you're trying to understand something, it's important that you go back to the beginning. And so uh, we started out in, uh, with in Genesis chapter 1. We start on Genesis chapter one, where we see here, God begins to confer <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit and Jesus by saying these words, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Now, the message Bible puts this, God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, making them reflect our nature so that they can be responsible for the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves <clears throat> on the face of the earth. And so God begins to uh, uh, form, form man. Form, <clears throat> God begins to form man. Now, you must understand this. Now, you read this in another translation. It says, God says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Okay. Uh, if you read in, I believe it's in, uh, in John, it says that, uh, it says that God is spirit. 
okay? And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we see here, we understand here that God is spirit, all right? God is spirit. Now, going back to Genesis chapter 1, he says, let us make man in our image and our <clears throat> likeness. So, uh, if God made man in his image and his likeness, he made man <clears throat> spirit. So, uh, we are spiritual beings first and natural beings second. Okay? Let me say that again. We are spiritual beings first and natural being second why because we have been made after god's image and his likeness and god is spirit okay so god says let's make man our image and our likeness and let's put him over the fish of the seas the sea the birds of the air and the cattle and let's put him over earth itself all right and then god begins to after he creates uh, them, <clears throat> okay, them. God creates them. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. And he created them male and female, right? Created them male and female. God blessed them. And he said these words prosper, <clears throat> reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Now, <clears throat> Now, uh, uh, going over to Genesis chapter 2, we understand here, we see that uh, uh, verse 8, we kind of picked up with verse 8 there, uh, that God, after God created man, <clears throat> uh, God created this, uh, uh, looked upon the earth, and he needed someone to uh, manage it. All right. So in Genesis chapter two, he takes man, which is spirit, and he begins to form or make man a body. OK, so out of the dust of the ground, God made man. And so as he did this, the Bible says here in Genesis chapter two, verse eight, after he had created him, they said, then God planted a garden Eden in the east. He put the man <clears throat> He put the man he had just made in it. Okay, now we want, I'm going to tell you what that word put means in just a moment. But I want to really help us to understand something tonight. Because uh, many of you tonight, and I promise you I won't be long, and I really don't have too much time here, so I'm just going to try to work this as best as I can. Many of you tonight, you have been laboring you have been working very hard you many of you have been going out you've been looking for jobs and many of you you know have certain types of degrees you have you know you have even just graduated from college and or you just graduated from trade school and and you know they have told you that with this degree <clears throat> that you will be able to uh get a job <clears throat> that you'll be able to you know, live that dream and that thing that you, you know, you know, you know, you know, the commercial that they put up that this is this will be you after you complete this course. And this is what you're able to do. And, you know, they put the nice little boats and everything, you know, with, with you and, and, and your wife or <clears throat> you and your family sailing on the boats and, you know, sipping on some grape juice or whatever, wine, whatever, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> sitting on the beach, walking on the beach, you know, and say all this can be yours. You go through this course so you're going through all the, the course you're going through all the necessary steps and everything but now you're in this place now to where the degree that you just got is not helping you at all mm -hmm. I'm talking to somebody tonight that you have done everything you know to do but you still haven't got hired uh-huh See, many of you have been have been hitting the pavement hard. You have been grabbing applications and filling them out and flipping them over to the other side and filling out the backside and, you know, getting the references and going on the Internet and trying to find uh, the, uh, the address of the places that you used to work like two or three years ago and, and all of that stuff because the company that you are applying for want to know your history. And so you do all this, you go through all this work, and yeah, you do all the technical work and, and do all the leg work, and, and you get, get all that stuff done only to be at this place where you still have not gotten a job. Uh -huh. And so now you are at the place of frustration. 
you're at the place where you got, okay, I got these, I got this beautiful woman in front of me and I got these beautiful kids looking at me and I, and I got this house here or I have this apartment or I have, you know, uh, just this little spot here and, and, you know, and I got this little car out there and everything is staring at me. I got bills staring at me. I got, you know, I got the, you know, even the, the, the loans that, you know, that I took out for school, you know, that, you know, you remember that school that that school that told you that if you go through our course then you know you'll be able to you know get any job you want and 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 and, and be able to live that american dream and and, and do all of this sorts of deal and, and and live the good life and everything but you're looking at everything everything is now staring back at you <clears throat> saying what are you gonna do uh-huh and you are looking at yourself in a mirror saying what am i going to do and so many of you right now you are are in your you're on your knees and you have been in, in secret you have left out the house just for a few minutes saying that you're going out to get some milk and you was going out to get some bread and, and you were going out to you know to get some get some uh, um, uh some lunch meat but really you were in your car crying because you were trying to scratch your head and wonder how is this going to work out and I got this family here and I got that going on and 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 I got this degree and maybe you don't have a degree but you got the skills but they're still not hiring you mm -hmm. and that you're you're standing there and you're looking at yourself saying God what is going to happen now something has got to break and so you feel yourself in a position where the weight of the world is on you because everything everything the people that you love and and the things that you have is staring at you want to know what you gonna do yeah I'm talking to some men tonight that have cried in secret I'm talking to some men tonight that just wanted to just end it all I want I'm talking to some men tonight that just really Really wanted to just walk away but but you know, you know I, I, but I'm talking to some men tonight that out of everything that you have done everything that you try to do it still ain't happening yeah let me just turn the chapter here because I'm talking to some men now that you're in the household mm -hmm. and you got some folks you know that pretty little thing that you married now is looking at you uh, with disgust <laughs> saying what are you gonna do what are you gonna do and uh and not really affirming you like you're supposed to be affirming and 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 looking at you like you said this and you told me this and you said that you were going to take care of us and you said that you were going to do this and do that and so you feel the pressure from that okay let's just go a little bit further here because see now you got all your friends and you got some of the families and you got some of the in-laws and you got some of the, the cousins and the other cousins looking at you and know your situation and saying wait a minute you know I thought he was this and I thought that he was going to do that and I, you know he went to school and, and this didn't happen and, and you know and he got all these skills and it still ain't happening for him and they're looking at you like mm, mm, mm. man got all those skills and don't know what to do and he, man he just he just could not be a good man because you got everything staring at you okay let's, let's go let's just go even deeper now because see now now you go to church mm -hmm. you go to church and now you got the leader <clears throat> looking at you <laughs> preaching at you uh -huh, telling you <clears throat> that you're not a real man because you ain't taking care of your family because you ain't got no job and so <clears throat> you got all these pressures now coming up against you you got all these things now <clears throat> fighting against you and you if that wasn't bad enough now you got the devil mm -hmm. you got the devil now looking at you saying hey man i thought that you were this and i thought that you were that and, and yeah yeah what you know look how you how you gonna how you gonna take care of your your family you ain't no provider you 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 ain't no real man see now see i'm talking to some men that not only that you had to hear verbally from those who have aligned themselves with the agenda of hell and speaking the the will and the purpose of enemy of the enemy but now you got to deal with the thoughts yeah yeah you got to deal with the thoughts see 
see Joyce Meyer wasn't off when she said that 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 the that the mind is the battleground. Yes, that that that's the battlefield right there. So now many of you are sitting at home and just <clears throat> at war in your mind. Don't know what you're going to do. Qualify, <clears throat> qualify, skilled <clears throat> and ready and ready to do, but nobody won't hire you. I'm just talking to my brothers tonight because you have been put down and you have been slapped down and you have been uh, looked down upon and and all of that simply because you could not get a job here and then and then many 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 people have said things in your presence and said things in secret but you can feel the weight of the words yeah i'm, I'm talking to your brother let me let me just holler at you for a minute <clears throat> so so you found yourself in a place at a point at a breaking point saying i gotta have some relief i gotta find a place where i can go I I gotta I gotta just get away I just I gotta get away I just wish I could just fly away and just get away because my mind is just is just weighing on me and and I and I'm wrestling with depression and I'm wrestling uh, with all of these thoughts and and all this stuff and I seem like I can't talk to nobody because everybody's expecting me you know to be at this certain level everybody's expecting me to come up to their standards so since I'm not at that their standards then I, I then you know then they can't really talk to me and, the, and 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 those who were cool with me now they ain't cool with me because they think that I'm less of a man because I don't have a job mm, okay I'm going to talk to you brothers because let's go back to the beginning let's go back to the beginning let's go back to Genesis God says let us make man huh, in our image and in our likeness I want to tell you tonight I want to tell you tonight that before God gave man work uh, come on before God gave man an assignment he birthed him he made him to be in his presence come on he made him to be in his presence and and let me tell you that that God already called you good no uh, come on see many of you you're wrestling with these thoughts of you're not good and that you're not good enough and that you're not a good man but let me tell you that according to genesis chapter one that after god created them male and female after god had created them the bible said god looked at what he did say and said it was good come on you gotta understand that with huh, come on holy ghost you gotta understand that if you have a job or if you don't have a job if you have a career if you don't have a career god says that you're good come on i just wish i can have somebody here that's with me tonight that can understand that no matter what no matter what your present situation looks like god says that you're good and i just wish that you just lay hands on yourself right there and just say i'm good yeah i'm good i'm good uh-huh i'm good i'm good yeah i'm good god, yeah yeah god when god made me yeah he said when he finished me he said that that's good uh-huh come on i'm talking to you brothers i'm talking to you brothers listen i know that that leader said that you were no good because you didn't have a job and i know that that leader and folks said to you that are you not a good man and, and because they have a certain standard of what are our qualifications that uh, a man should be but God said I created you with my hands and you are already good listen understand this no degree no degree can define you even if you don't have a degree yes nothing in this world can define you nothing in this world can qualify you as being good or not good you're just good anyway because you have been created by the father so <clears throat> listen now god made his men his sons to be in the presence first look at this now genesis chapter one says it 
He says he's made in his image and his likeness. And then he goes on to say, now I want you to prosper. I want you, look at this now, Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, he says, prosper, take charge, mm -hmm. fill the earth. That's what he says, fill the earth. <clears throat> so before, before everything else, God says, after I created you, I bless you. Oh, come on. After I created you, I bless you. I hope you're hearing me tonight, brothers, because because you're blessed. Uh -huh. Come on. I know. I know that they said that you were cursed. I know that they will say that you were no good. I know they said that you weren't good for nothing. But God said, Shekinah, God said that you're blessed. So so now after he created you, he said, you're blessed. <clears throat> he said, let me bless you here. Let me tell you what's going to happen. He says, I want you to prosper. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, I, I want you to prosper. <clears throat> uh -huh. He said, I want you to reproduce. Now, you got to understand how God says things now. You, you got to understand how he says things because, because when God spoke, <clears throat> He was saying, he wasn't saying it as if, or I should say the tone of God, uh, the verbiage of God. It wasn't God saying, I want you to prosper, okay? We, we know God, we already know God wants us to prosper, but no, he was saying prosper. In other words, when God said prosper, what he was saying was the tone of him uh, or his verbiage here was him saying that you will. Uh, come on. When he said reproduce, he wasn't saying reproduce. What he was saying was you will reproduce because let's understand this. Understand this. When God said, when God said, let there be light, you know what he was saying? <clears throat> light in me be. In other words, he was just speaking it, not not speaking as if this is what is going to happen this is what already is come on so when god said prosper you are all what he was speaking a word into you and i saying that you're going to prosper that in you is the ability to prosper so when he said reproduce it was in you he placed in you the ability to reproduce take charge placed in you the ability to take charge and to fill the earth so come on just come on just just tell yourself just lay hands on yourself say i'm loaded and i'm dangerous come on i'm loaded and i'm dangerous i'm loaded and i'm dangerous because i have the ability to prosper i have the ability to reproduce i have the ability to fill the earth i have the ability to take charge god in heaven i hope you hear me tonight that it's not something that you're going to do or or i should say it's not something that's going to be in you that you're going to prosper <clears throat> you are already have the ability to prosper you i'm telling you it's, it's already in you it's not something that you have to go get and then you have it no god says it's already in you so whatever you do <laughs> whatever you do God, help me. Whatever you do, you're going to prosper. Whatever you do, it's going to reproduce. Whatever you do, it's going to fill the earth. Whatever you do, yes, whatever you do, it's going to cause you to be able to take charge. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 says this very clearly. It says, after God made the, uh, the Garden of Eden for man, or he made the Garden of Eden, Verse 8 of Genesis chapter 2, he says, God planted a garden in Eden, in the east. He put the man he just made in it. Now, this is the message Bible. He put the man he just made in it. Now, understand, as I said, we're spiritual beings first. And so now, what did God do? He said, I got to make you a body now out of the dust of the ground so god makes him a body out of the ground and so after that he put him in the garden oh come on he put him in the garden now that word put is very 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 interesting mm -hmm. remember i said that before god gave the man 
an objective objective before God gave the man an assignment. OK, before God gave the man uh, work. All right. <clears throat> which which, by the way, there is a difference between your work and a job. OK, I'll get to that in a minute. But 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 before he even gave him work. He had him in his presence. Oh, come on. So here the word put here means it means in the Hebrew rest. Uh -huh. So you, brother, you were made to rest before there was even an assignment being declared. Before God put you to work, you were made to rest. Come on. You were made to rest. You were made to rest in his presence. You were made to live in his presence. You were, you were made to worship him. You were made to rest. Aha. Uh -huh. See, we got it twisted. We said God made man that he put him to work. No, he did not. No, God, God put man in Eden to the east to rest, to rest in him. Why is that? Because no matter what you do, one of the things that you got to get, one of the things that you must understand, one of the things that you must build your life upon, the foundation that you must live your life upon, build your life upon, is learning how to rest in him. See, God ain't no fool. He knows what he's doing. He's saying, listen, I want to get you to, I want you to understand now that it's important for you to rest in me because it ain't going to get done by your own efforts. Hear me. Whatever it is, it ain't going to get done by your own efforts. You got to learn how to rest in God. And, and I believe that this is the key that many of you, the Lord has spoken to you and give you clear instructions on where to go and <clears throat> where to apply and, and, and to do all of this other stuff. But there's one missing ingredient. And here's how I know. There's one missing ingredient, and that is the rest factor. How do I know this? Because right now, many of you are at the point of frustration. Many of you are at the place where things are so, you are so impatient, anxious, worrying. OK, when the foundation from the very beginning, God designed you to rest in his presence. So we go down to Genesis, uh, still in Genesis chapter two, but going to verse 15. So man was made to rest. <clears throat> All right. Verse 15. God took the man and set him down in the Garden of Eden to work the ground and to keep it in order so before God gave him his assignment God had him rest God had him had him in the place to <clears throat> rest in his presence then he gave him his assignment what am I saying to you tonight brothers that the very thing that you're after the very thing that God saying, the very thing that you're after, the reason why it's not happening is because I want you to rest in me. You were made to rest in me. I told you we're going back to the beginning. When any time that there is a situation, a problem, you got to go back to the beginning. You got to go back to where it all began. How did it start? <clears throat> and so God says, you got to rest in me. Because while you're resting in me, watch this now, God says, I will take you and I will sit you in the place where you're supposed to work. I hope you hear me. I hope you hear me. God says, when you rest, I can take you and place you at the place in the place where you're supposed to be. Look at this now. Genesis chapter 15. God took the man and set him down in the garden. What is the garden? In the garden to work the ground. That was his assignment. God took him and placed him in his assignment. God took him and placed him in his assignment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. God took him and put him in his assignment. God simply wants you to rest. And he says tonight to you, my brothers, 
that he said, I want you to rest. Go back to the place of rest. Go back to the place of rest. The children of Israel, Hebrews said that, that God <clears throat> would not allow them to get in, would not allow them to inherit the promised land or to enter that rest because of their unbelief. And so God is saying tonight, brothers, <clears throat> They say, I, they say, I understand the frustration. I, I understand that you've been working. I understand the pressures and all that. He said, but I want you to get this now. He said, I want you to understand that you're already blessed. I want you to understand that you've been made by my hands. I want you to understand that you're all good. I want you to understand that you're good. Uh, hear me. I want you to understand that you're good. No matter what anybody else is saying, no matter what anybody wants to say, no, no matter what anybody's thinking about you, God says, you're good. And God says, I have placed you, watch this now, from the very beginning, God says, I put you in a place of rest so that you will learn how to rest in me. Learn how to rest in me. And as you're resting in me, I will take you and place you where you're supposed to be. May I say to you that some of the places that you have applied to, you are not supposed to be there. I know it was good. I know it was great. I know it will work out. But God says you're not supposed to be there. I remember I was I remember I applied for this one company. Man, I'll tell you, I was like, man, you know, perfect, perfect. I was I can manage my own hours. I could, you know, I could, you know, the, the pay is great, all that good stuff. And I was like, whoo, yeah, this is the ticket here, baby, right here. And then all of a sudden, I got the call. Oh, we decided to go with someone else. And I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This 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 was this position right here is guaranteed. I, I mean, I'm like, hey, come on. This is this is it right here. And I didn't get it. There are some places, although it looks good, it sounds good, but it's not the place. Mm -hmm. See, don't get it twisted, y'all. Don't get it twisted. <clears throat> see, see, God, God, God is not interested in you getting a job. God is interested in you walking in your work god is not interested in you finding a job god is interested in you stepping into your work many of you and and look and that and that is just not watch me now that's not just one area not don't get like we call tunnel vision you know because because you know, when we say the word <clears throat> work, we only just classify it for just like just this and it can be that. And 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 listen now, <clears throat> your work could be anything. Your work could be in the marketplace. You may be called and equipped to work in a bank. <clears throat> you may be called and equipped to work, you know, uh as a manager in the uh in a grocery store or uh in uh in a supermarket or you may be called and equipped to work in the house of the Lord. And you see that and you see that even scripturally that there was there there were I believe it was the um the Levites, you know, that th their job was to minister in the house of the Lord. That was it. That was their work. So it could be anything. And so many places that we are applying for and we're not getting a call back and we're not hearing anything and or we'll get the call back, go to the interview and and get shut down. Why? Because God says that's not the place where I want to place you. That's not your assignment. Oh, come on now. Come on. Come on. Hear me. That's not your assignment. So the question is, God, what is my assignment? I, I just challenge you, brothers, tonight. I challenge you to take your applications and set it aside. I challenge you to go back to the place, go back to the beginnings, go back to the place of rest, go back to the place of resting in the presence of the Lord, 
so that you, watch this now, so that you can find out what is your assignment. God told him. God told him. Genesis chapter 1. He said, I've given you. He said, I created you. He said, to have authority over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the earth, over the cattle, and even earth itself. It was in his presence. It was in his presence. The Lord showed him his assignment. And, watch this now. <laughs> Man did not, Adam did not place himself there. God took him there. Mm -hmm. Now, see, this leads us right into Psalms 37. Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man, hallelujah, are ordered by the Lord. Genesis says God took man, took man and placed him in his assignment. The steps of a good man. God looked at it and said, he's good. God said, this is good. <clears throat> the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights, God delights in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. <laughs> Though he falls, he shall not utterly be cast down. Mm hmm so you without now many of you you may have made mistakes though he fall though he lost his job though he is without employment right now he god upholds him with his hand You may have lost your job. And even as we listen, you listen this tonight, you may have just found out that, that that after 20 or 35 years of service, they're letting you go. Everything could be falling all around you. But it is the Lord that will uphold you. You're not like going to be in like anybody else. There are many who are losing their jobs, and their faith was in their jobs. Their trust was in their jobs. And now they're just gone. Just gone. Just gone in the mind. Gone. Never forget it. I'm closing. And I was in Ohio. We used to hear about when 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 the economy was starting to act real funny things start happening jobs were f people losing jobs and left and right and i'll never forget it. stories on the news about men men who lost their jobs killed themselves no killed their children and their wife and themselves because of the economy mm -hmm. see many of you right now if it wasn't the Lord, if it wasn't for the Lord upholding you, if it wasn't for the Lord <clears throat> keeping you together, you don't know what could have happened. Many people right now losing their lives right now, losing their minds because they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Now let's get off the world for a minute. Let's talk about in the church. Losing their minds. Don't know that they're already good. That though they fall, <laughs> though things fall, though things fall, God upholds them. Hmm. Yeah, God upholds them. Yeah. So, so I want you to know tonight, your steps are ordered by the Lord. God does not want you to waste time. 
He does not want you to tire yourself out. And the Lord is free in many of you tonight. Because many of you, many of you tonight are feeling the pressures of, I got to do this. And God is releasing you of that tonight. He said, I want you to just rest in me. So I can place you where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why, why settle for just a job when God wants to place you? Place you in your assignment. Because where you're assigned to, that's where the blessing is. Mm -hmm. Where you are assigned, where God has, uh, where God has called you to be, where <clears throat> understand this. <clears throat> no matter where it is, no matter what it is, God has already set it up for you to be there, and God has already, already now, already decided this is the place where you're going to be blessed. Now, Father, I pray tonight, each man, right now. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands, bro. I just, I just pray tonight. I pray tonight for every man, every man that has been torn down, ripped apart, ripped to shreds tonight. Father, I thank you for a divine reversal. I thank you tonight, Lord God, that from the very beginning, you looked at man and said, said, ah, he's good. And so, Lord, I thank you, Father, for every declaration that has been spoken over them that has been negative. Every declaration that has been spoken over their lives is not true. It's now canceled and destroyed in the name of Jesus. And I pray tonight, God, that your men will rise up and take their place and know that they are fully loaded. And, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for freeing every man of man's standard. Every one of your sons, God. Father, I thank you for freeing them tonight from man's standard. Mm -hmm. From man's standard. From man's qualifications. This is what you're supposed to, this is what qualifies you uh, in being a good man. Father, we, we just curse that tonight in Jesus' name. Whoo, shetanamai. We curse that tonight because they're already good. You don't have to qualify. Hear the Lord saying, you don't have to qualify to be a good man. You're already good. You're already good. And so tonight, I pray that that label will be broken off their lives. In the precious name of Jesus. Be broken off their lives tonight. Be broken off their lives. In Jesus' name. I give you glory, Father. Father, I thank you for the testimonies. I thank you, I thank you, Father, that as a result of your word, God, going into the hearts of your sons, now, now, radical change. Radical change. Radical change. In the name of Jesus. Radical change. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father, for every heart being lifted tonight. Every discouraged heart has been lifted tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, and amen. Listen, my brothers, if you're blessed by this word, I want you to email me. I want you to hit me up at brian at newwindinternational.com. I want you to let me know what's up. And so and we're praying for you. And we believe in God that his word has gone forth and has fell on good ground. And we want to hear the praise reports as well. We want to hear from you and hear what the Lord has done for you. All right. All right. Now we got to get on out of here. We bless you all. We love you. And this is Apostle Brian sound, sound, signing off here. And uh, we will keep up. Uh, uh, we would uh, hope and pray that you keep up with us by newsletter and by Facebook. Also on Twitter as well. We love you much. God bless you. Take care. Good night.